from Pearson Bell at Home. So today, I'm gonna show you real quick. So we're painting on some fabric. So we're painting on some throw pillows. Now you can get these covers at Hobby Lobby or what have you, but I got mine from um, Ikea. They're very inexpensive. They come in loads of colors. I've got pink, uh, gray, white. I'm sure they've got other colors. Those are my staple colors because you guys know I love pink. Yeah. So this uh, piece I did, it's got the uh, shell stone stenciled on it and then a little sheer bliss. So I don't know if you guys can see that um, shimmer there from the sheer bliss. These are my colors. I'm not a traditional girl. I love pink and gray. So that will be, this is my pillow. Um, and then I also created, kind of playing around with the stamps from Prima, the springtime stamp. So don't think of the springtime stamp as just totally in the spring. You could totally use it now. So I got my gray one and this is more of a vintage wallpaper vibe. And I use the silver star to stamp. So you guys can barely see kind of a little bit there you go it's a little more prominent in person but it's just kind of one of those vintage wallpaper vibe it is have a little shimmer to it it is silver uh, silver star metallic so this will go great with the other piece so it gives it kind of a winter vibe so not necessarily so springtime all right so I've got for us today we've got a white um, throw pillow cover like I said, you can get them at Hobby Lobby or whatever, and you can just switch out your inserts because these are all zippered, and you can do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my stencil. So we're gonna do the Let It Snow again on camera for you. Now, I've already sprayed it with the stencil adhesive. A very important, you need repositionable re adhesive. It just makes that bond or that, it seals those holes where you're trying to stencil so you don't have as much seepage. If I just kind of laid it down, it wouldn't uh, quite work out so well. So um, we spray it and then I'm gonna take a little cloth here. So I've already let it sit up a bit and you just kind of pull that tackness up, a just a tad. You don't wanna put it straight on your um, piece. You just kind of give it a little bit of a tack or pull that tack up a little bit. Um, what also, one thing on the um, spray adhesive I'm not a fan about is that you do, to get it off, you do need to use uh, mineral spirits to get that part off of the back of your stencil. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip you guys down so you can kind of see this. You won't see my cute face anymore, but you will see the project and that's most important. All right, so I'm just getting this lined up. I don't get all scientific. I just line them up by eye. And again, this is a project you can totally do with the kiddos, the whole family. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little brayer here and just kind of squish all that squish it down just make sure because if I try to squish it down like this I'm gonna probably end up ripping my stencil so it's just easier to make sure I got it all all on there all right and as long as you're using a repositionable adhesive you're a-okay all right so we've got that all on our canvas and I do have it lined with parchment paper. So you do want to put something in here to protect it. You don't want um, that to get seep through and get onto your other side. All right, so our color we're using is opulence. And I'm just gonna give it a nice shake. It's already been shaken and stirred, but we're gonna shake it again. All right, so let me get this guy open. And you can use any stencil brush. Okay. I'm gonna keep that because I might need that here in a second. All right, so we've got, I'm just using one of my Blue Ice one inch round brushes. We will get them again. Um, it is a firm brush, but you can use any stencil brush. Um, I don't use daubers on this, but I am sure you can. Uh, so we're just gonna get load up our brush. Got too much, do that. And we're gonna load off here. I'm just gonna kind of swirl that off. So what I'm gonna do, you ready? We're just gonna, it's a lot of pouncing, guys. And you're just gonna pounce that on there. Now, if you were doing fabric on a chair, upholstery, you are most likely going to uh, water this down a bit. Usually, I will spray my upholstery with water um, and then apply my paint and just kind of keep going that direction. Um, we may have a project. If one comes up, we'll certainly do that as well. 
that's always a fun transformation, taking a, an ugly chair that has some tragic fabric on it and making it beautiful again. And if you have seepage hay, it's okay. Like I said, this is a great project to do with the, the kids, the family, especially you've got Christmas coming up here. You're gonna have, hopefully you have people coming to visit. You know, a few, not a huge gathering, but a few. And if you've got grandkids, this would be a fun project. I even see them doing their handprints would be kind of fun to do something like that. Would be pretty cool. And I'm sure you could freehand and all that good stuff. All right, so like I said, it's a lot of pouncing. And this is a, this particular stencil I got at, I think it's called Studio R12. I do not sell their stencils, but I do use them for my classes. I like the thickness and they're a decent price. But you can get stencils anywhere. You can, uh, we have the Prima stencils, you can grab those. You can get stencils at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, any craft store get those. Now, of course, when we're doing the stenciling on this, you will not dilute it because it would make it too loosey-goosey and just kind of bleed everywhere. So you don't want that to happen. And it's just, because it is going on fabric, you do use, I guess, quite a bit, or it doesn't go as far as if you're doing it on, let's say, another painted surface. I'm just using what's in the lid. And you can certainly, if you wanted to get crafty creative, I could see that you would, you could also do a, a blendy blend. So you could take another color for the second half and just kind of overlap a little. That would be a, a lot of fun to do. So you can get a multicolor kind of an ombre effect. I did not do that with this one usually mixing red and green doesn't make a really pretty color so and since the pillowcase is white <clears throat> it didn't make sense to throw that in there and since the pillowcase is white I guess if I make a mistake I could always touch it up with white right all right so I'm gonna go through this real quick pounce pounce your arm will feel a little tired Going. That's where your um, children can come in handy. They can take turns pouncing. And get that done for you. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Enjoy them, get them tired, and all that good stuff, right? All right, so got a little bit there. Make sure you don't, when you're touching your piece, you don't have uh, paint all over the place because you will get it on your pillowcase and you'll be kind of sad. But you can always go with it if something like that happens. Just add some more little oops all over, you know what I mean? So kind of like uh, you meant to do it that way. done with this portion so it's very easy peasy let's see get all of this down and if you guys have questions and I will go back and answer them. I always answer every comment or question. I address everybody. 
All right, so we're done with our opulence. All right, so we'll move this aside. I don't wanna make a mess. That would be kind of sad. All right, so now we have our opulence on, and of course it's not dry, and that's a-okay, I'm fine with that. Now one thing, um, we're gonna go over this with Sheer Bliss to give it just a bit of a shimmer. Now, we're gonna open up my Sheer Bliss. I've already shaken it. I used it yesterday, so there's not as much sediment here at the bottom, but I can see it here. Let's see when I open it what happens and I do line when I close my uh, twisty tops I put a little bit of um, saran wrap on them just it makes it easier for me to get into them all right let's see all right so this one's pretty well stirred so I do want to show you guys just a little hint, a little tip with our metallics. It's very, 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 very important. And I cannot stress it enough. So when you get the metallics, they will have settled. So you see how you got that? All the metallic parts have uh, settled to the bottom. Um, you can shake this and shake this. And unless you're like the Hulk, you're probably not going to get that totally shaken all the way through. Um, you could probably even shake it for 10 minutes and it probably wouldn't get you anywhere. So, um, let me show you. Okay. And this is brilliant white. And get that off. There we go. Don't make a mess. Okay. All right. So, let me take my spoon. All right, so right here, it's very thin, but you dig down the bottom, there's all your uh, metallics, okay? So you do need to stir that really well and stir it up and then you can shake it, but you definitely wanna stir that in. That's gonna stir in. Um, like I said, it doesn't shake in, you need to stir it in. Um, once you stir it, I mean, you're not gonna be stirring it very long, you just stir all those parts in. Then you go ahead and shake it and you're ready to rock and roll. Um, that'll probably last you possibly a week. Um, and those parts might be suspended pretty easily or at least shaken in pretty easy. Um, otherwise, you do need to stir it again. Once it sits around a little bit, all those metal flakes, all the metallics um, kind of hang to the bottom. So you definitely want to want to stir that up. So that's just my my tip of the day when it comes to the metallics, really, really important and wanted to share that with you guys. All right, so let me grab another stir stick here. Put some stuff on a million things. All right, so let me grab another stir stick real fast for you guys. I buy little ice cream spoons for my metallics because they're in the little small, um, container so the little spoon will work perfect and all I'm doing is I just want a little bit of this and I'm going to use my workspace here and I'm just going to drop it on my paper. I use the builder's paper. This is a new paper. It's actually really really thick um, so it works really well. It doesn't get on my table and I can use it to do this kind of project. So I'm just going to go ahead and stir this up so I'm going to get a little bit of metallic on my brush. And you can use um, a plate or what have you, but I'm already gonna throw away this paper, so why not put it on there? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start dabbing on our metallic. So this is Sheer Bliss. It gives a nice shimmer to all of the colors. So if you want a little extra shimmer shimmer, just dab it on. It is not a glaze. Is a glaze you typically wipe back. If you want to call it a glaze that you just put on and don't wipe off, sure. Kind of gives that same thing. But if you wipe it off, that glitter kind of gets, um, or the metallic parts kind of get uh, moved around. It doesn't look as nice. So I usually put it on and leave it on. Works the best. All right, let's get that. 
and this will start to dry a little clearer. You'll see it. There'll be spots that are more uh, pigmented or more uh, heavily have the metallic, and that's A-OK. -okay. That's kind of a nice look. You don't want it to be totally perfect. I mean, this is a piece you're making, right? So you want it to be unique to you. Get a little more. But Sheer Bliss is one of those really fun metallics that can really change everything. I don't swirl on the fabric. I do swirl like I did a few weeks ago with my bees, but I don't swirl on the fabric. I don't want it to push it underneath and the fabric may sort of absorb it a different way. So I, I try to be as careful as possible. So usually the stippling method works the best. isn't as um, this doesn't have to have full coverage so you just kind of kind of moving on along you're trucking along with this portion of the project so it's not a project that takes forever it's just a fairly easy project and of course this is a pretty good size stencil we would normally use this on our 18 inch boards if it's a nice circle this is a 20 inch pillowcase. So you can of course get smaller stencils or do all uh, the um, stamps, which are a lot of fun. Okay. Go back this way. Just adding a little shimmer. We're just doing a little more traditional with the red or the green and then we'll throw in some red and gold bits here as well. So you can, instead of spending a fortune on pillows, although I don't mind because I do sell pillows, haha, <laughs> um, but you can also make your own and they're really, really, really easy. Um, a case, a cover costs maybe um, somewhere around $5 and I'm sure you have a pillow that you're not um, loving. You can always take the insert out um, or sometimes with our seasonal pillows, we'll take, we'll just change out the... Uh, the case and the insert gets used all year so you can kind of get creative so you don't have a plethora or a mountain of throw pillows at home because I'll have to admit I have a, a couple of closets that have throw pillows in them all right let's see just a little bit more shimmer everything's better with shimmer right And I will tell you, I think Hobby Lobby has pillow covers in two areas, but the, their crafty pillows are only going to be in the that linen-y color, that kind of brownie linen color. Um, they are cotton. Um, they work great too. All right, I think I got my shimmer where it all needs to be. A little bit more right there. All right, so I'm pretty happy with my shimmer placement. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of our way. Okay. All right, so make sure my hand is clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my baby wipe real quick. I use baby wipes because we don't have a sink back here. I'm just gonna wipe my hand, make sure I don't have any extra um, paint on my hand. So when I take off my stencil, I don't wanna mess it up with paint. I mean, that would be kind of, really counterproductive. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this off again. We use the spray adhesive that's repositionable. And you could probably do another one after this if you so choose to. You don't have to reposition or respray the adhesive on it. 
All right, so <clears throat> there you go. Here's our current state of situation right here. All right, so this got the opulence and sheer bliss right over it. So what I'm gonna do now, let's move this over. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna do a couple of little stamps and then we'll be calling it a day. All right, so on my stamps, there are many, many ways to apply your stamps and you know use your stamping medium or whatever, your ink, your I'll show you the rest of the parts that come with this guy. So this is kind of what we're working with today. This is a springtime stamp from Prima. And we're working with these two little guys today. They're cute and sweet. And the way I'm going to apply the uh, paint, instead of rolling, typically I'll use a high density foam roller. This has been around a while. Um, I usually will roll it on and be done with it and then stamp. These are kind of small, so it makes it a little harder for me to, to roll that. So I'm actually going to just, for the look I want, is I'm gonna throw, I've got this little cardboard insert that came with my pillow cover. I'm just gonna paint this a little bit. I'm going to take this, it's almost gonna be like my stamping pad. I'm gonna stamp it, stamp it there, and I'll do the same thing with the other one. And we're gonna do a two process, two colors, because they are clearly aligned. Stamp so you can see through them so you can align it back up when you're putting your second color so we're gonna do a two stamp process with two colors so first we're gonna go with the rich gold rich gold we've already shaken and stirred so I'm just doing another quick shake and I'm gonna just add a little paint to my little cardboard over here all right Get that off that piece. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little paint here, not too, too thick, because if it's too thick, it's gonna really get in there. And um, so I probably put too much there, because metallics can go a long way, you guys. All right, so that's pretty good there. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna call him little Chi Chi Bird. I'm gonna take him. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop him in my paint. And I'm gonna try to pick him back up. Okay, so he's got some, he's got a good amount of paint on him and I might just kind of punch some of that off. All right, make sure I'm happy with all that paint on there. All right, so we're good with that. All right, so I'm gonna position him. And this is still wet, you guys, so if you lean on it, you're gonna get painted, so you don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna put him right up here and you're just gonna press on it lightly I mean you're not gonna like hammer this down you're gonna just give it a nice little press and then you're gonna pull this right up okay so we've got him there in the gold now we'll come back and put a little red on him next so we're gonna go ahead and get this bird hanging out over here because he wants to be perched over here and it's just adding a little bit of something to make this your own make it unique so again, dropping my little guy in there, um, in the little paint that I made kind of like a little stamp pad. I did this with um, a roller. This was my favorite way to do it on this particular one. All right, I'm making sure I don't have any extra on me. All right, so we're gonna just drop him right there. And we're just gonna punch, punch, punch him down. Again, you're not gonna be pressing him real hard. You're not pressing too hard on that. Just kind of giving him just a little, little press. And then you're gonna pick him up and boom, he's so cute. All right, so now, and I'm not gonna clean this up. We're not gonna clean those off. We're gonna just go ahead and work on our next color. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in the water. And I'm gonna get our gold out of the way because we are done with gold. Like I said, that's rich gold. And we gotta have, we can't have traditional Christmas without our Russian red. So we're gonna throw in a little Russian red. So we're gonna just kind of stamp right over and give them a little bit of hint of red. So basically we're gonna do the same thing. All right, so make sure I don't have any. <clears throat> so red will go a long way, I'm gonna tell you that now. All right, 
So let's go ahead and get a little bit of our Russian red. We're gonna paint on our little board here, my little piece of cardboard that came with. So we're not wasting anything today. We're totally using everything. All right, so I got a little bit of, little bit of it, of paint here, a little bit of the red. Okay, we're gonna get our little tiny Chi bird again, and we're gonna dump him in this little red. We're gonna call it my little stamp pad, I guess. So you don't need a whole lot of fancy stuff. All right, so he's got some red on him and I don't wanna drop him accidentally. So we're gonna make sure, I'm making sure I don't have anything on me. So we're gonna just line him up. Just gonna line him up. And if he's off, it's all right. Okay, we're gonna press that down and then we're gonna pick that up. Boom, he's a little off, but I'm okay with that. All right, so when I'm done with these, um, so far I just drop them in. I have a little bath over here. That is, um, I do put them in rubbing alcohol to get that paint right off real quick. I don't leave them in there overnight or anything crazy like that. It's just a real quick, helps me get them cleaner faster. Like I said, don't leave them in there for very long. I have not tested that, but I usually will soak my stencils in an alcohol bath as well. Um, you can certainly put them in dirt under the sink. I have a tiny sink here, so I usually use a tub and, and put them in there. Alcohol, rubbing alcohol, um, get water-based paint off pretty easily. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this guy. We're gonna line him up. Let's hope I do a better job this time. All right, so he looks all good and lined up. We're gonna go ahead and press lightly on it. Like I said, you're not gonna smush it down. Just a nice light press. And then we're gonna pick it up. All right, so we got a little bit of red on him. So cute little red birds with that. So I'm gonna get this out of your way real quick. We don't wanna spill any of this red. All right, and I'm gonna show you real quick. So this is kind of the finished product here, but up here now. All right, so worked on this yesterday so I got my little let it snow it's all done with my little birds so a little guy right here my little chichi bird and this little pal right there so perfect you can have like I said have the kids do it um, you guys can you see the sheer bliss on that Woo, I love it all right so again it's something that the whole family can do. I think you guys would have a lot of fun doing it. Um, add a splash of color onto your sofa. Change out those pillows uh, during the seasonal time of year. I mean, how much fun would this be? You have Valentine pillows and all kinds of fun stuff. So again, this was just simply painting on fabric. Um, if you were painting, I guess, a denim jacket, just heat set it, throw it in the dryer for about 20 minutes. Um, again, upholstery, water that down, but this, solid paint stenciled on you got it you can hand paint if you're a good painter go for it i'm a terrible like i can't i don't know i paint furniture so that's about it for me happy painting and i'll